So the life insurance policies that we're talking about today are called index universal life, different than the whole life policies that everyone, that a lot of people are familiar with and different than uh, variable uh, life insurance policies. The primary difference is you look at variable life insurance policies, quite a bit more expensive. They have the risk of loss. That's why they've gone uh, quite a bit down in as far as their usage because when the markets crash, you know, the variable policies lost value. And, of course, that's not why you're, you're using these vehicles. One of the advantages of, of what you want out of a life insurance policy is the guarantees and the safety. Whole life is a different strategy. Whole life policies, of course, have been around since the late 1700s. Haven't changed a whole lot from them. That's what a lot of people promote, of course, is the advantage. They are very stable. But whole life policies are more expensive. And so so when you're putting money into a whole policy, a whole life policy, it's probably not going to break even for 10 years. Uh, so then by the time you get to year 20, you're probably going to have maybe a net internal rate of return of maybe 2 to 3%. So they're, they're designed for a different purpose. Index universal life policies were designed to be low cost. Uh, you still have the death benefit protection, of course, for your family, but then they're taking advantage of ad advances in options and trading and hedging strategies uh, using what are now called indexing. So we'll have indexes like the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones. You'll have a 0% floor that protects you from losses combined with maximum caps on gains. Caps could be anywhere from you know 12% up to 17% or even as high as 20%. Uh, there's even uncapped strategies they have now as well. So it gives you that double-digit growth potential without the downside risk. Um, they're going to... If you compare them to a cost standpoint compared to, say, like a one and a quarter percent management fee, over the long term, it's going to cost maybe 60 to 70 percent less than those traditional strategies, and then the money comes out tax free. And so the, the video series that we have really goes into a lot of detail about Index Universal Life and, and why they're growing in popularity. Sales of uh, over one and a quarter billion in Index Universal Life in, in 2012 up from maybe 900 and so, so million dollars in 2011. So they're growing very rapidly, and it's, it's just one of those products that you're, you're starting to hear a lot more about. Again, you know, I've been doing it for the last 10 years, and whenever, when now I see the popularity of Index Universal Life, it kind of reminds me of you know, five or six years ago when I was on the radio talking about annuities and using index annuities to create guaranteed lifetime income. And kind of the mainstream financial, everyone was saying, no, no, you don't want to use annuities. Now you turn on the radio, everyone's selling annuities. The same thing will be with the Index Universal Life because they're getting a lot more popular because of the advantages they offer. And you just happen to be ahead of the game. I happen to be ahead of the game, yeah. <laughs> well, and also that's interesting, too, because when you think about the traditional advice, you're always, you've always heard in the past, you know, buy term, invest the rest, whole life is not a good investment, it's way too expensive. And yes, those are all those are true when you compare those two but when you're talking about this newer type of policy it sounds like these answer those negatives and give you some positives that you didn't have available in the past correct i mean the, the policy costs have come come down and there's even strategies we have now that had dramatically reduced the cost of the insurance which was one of the big deterrents before so the policies have gotten a lot less expensive and then when you're kind of looking at the advantages of like, you know, having a 0% floor with a cap of, you know, 14 or 15%, say using the S&P 500, you can, you know, what happens over time is when you look at the last decade, you know, most investors haven't made any money. I mean, that's just been the reality or the returns have been very anemic. And you have a year that's up, but then the next year the market's down, it's up and it's down. And so people kind of ride this roller coaster where over the last, you know, decade where the market's been flat, these policies have, have net, you know, averaged over 7% on their index crediting strategies. And so that's a, that's a huge difference in real wealth. That's the difference of your, you know, you have $500,000 versus having a million dollars. You know, it's the difference in real money. And people really can't afford to keep going another, you know, decade with market going up, market going down, not making anything, and, and just keep repeating that process. So I think it also comes back to the point you were making at the beginning about how um, companies are going away from the defined benefits, they're going away from the pensions, and because that 401ks cost them less, they're going more into the 401ks, which puts the employee at risk, right. really, That then, and they haven't performed. They haven't turned out to be the, the wonderful thing that we thought they were going to be back when they came out with them. Yeah, it's interesting. The data is really, if you have... Less than 2% of the people ever get a million dollars into their 401k, even though about 9% of the population maxes it out. So even of those people that are maxing it out, very few of them are actually getting it, getting it up there because as some of the, the data has shown that the fees in 401ks are very high, a lot of them haven't been disclosed. You know, for the average worker over the course of their working life, the fees add up to about $150,000. High wow. income earners adds up to a quarter million. Seriously. So the fee structures are very high in those. That's a lot of cost to that. And it's very hard for people to determine you know, whether their 401ks are actually growing. We have that conversation a lot when people come in and they say, 
you know, I can't tell if my 401k has grown or not. Or very often they'll see this number that says, oh, it's up 10% this year. And then they look and they go, wait, I put in 6%. My employee put in four. My employer put in four. So okay. it's only grown by what they put in. <laughs> what they so, put in, right. So the life insurance policies, the index life policies are a lot more popular. Even companies are going to that in lieu of 401ks uh, or defined benefits. And, and again, not, not, not that we go in and we eliminate other plans. Like when I'm working with companies, it's a balanced approach. Sometimes we'll do both. But people like the index policies because they can go in, offer it under that Section 162. You don't have all the ERISA requirements, meaning you don't have to offer it to all employees. You can carve out certain groups. There's no you know, mandatory contributions. There's so much more flexibility that they can do. And it removes a lot of that headache for the employer, a lot of that liability. And it gives their employees something that, hey, they can have a tax-free income stream when they retire. If something happens to them along the way, they get the death benefit. It protects their family. So there's a lot more options there. And then... By and large, employees like the idea that, hey, I can't lose money when the market drops. I mean, that gives a lot more peace of mind.